Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute, what I'm calling a crisscross treat box, because I love how the sides crisscross like this. Super cute. I want to give credit for the inspiration to fellow demonstrator Angie Judah of Chicken Scratch. I decided to change up the measurements so that we could use our tag topper punches for the top of this box and I just love the way it turned out. So the size of the box is one and a half inches in height, two inches in width, and one and a half inches in depth. You can get quite a few things in there. I think I fit about eight Hershey's Kisses, all kinds of candies and treats and other things will fit in this box. And it's just a sweet little size. So let me show you how easy this is to make. We're gonna start with a piece of Just Jade cardstock that measures five inches by eight inches. So you can get two of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. And on the five inch side, we're gonna score this at one and a half inches from both sides. Then I'm going to rotate it to the eight inch side and we're going to score this at one and three quarters and three and one quarter from both sides. So again, one and three quarters, three and one quarter. And then in the center section here, I want to make a score line at one inch. So I actually eyeball this, but if you want, you can do some of the cuts first and then bring it back to do the score line. But again, I'm just going to eyeball at one inch and do a score line just right down the center. You also can just do a score line all the way at one inch because ultimately these outside pieces are gonna fold into the box and no one will really notice that. So that will make it a little bit easier for you. So again, just one inch on those. I think you can see those partial score lines there. And that's all the scoring. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the paper. Now I'm going to bring in the template here and actually I'm going to rotate it so that it's in portrait. So I've got my cardstock in portrait. The measurements are all the same in both directions so it really doesn't matter which side you start with. But bringing in my paper snips, I'm going to cut up each of these vertical score lines stopping at that first horizontal score line that goes all the way across the cardstock. And I'm actually cutting just to the inside of the score line. So I think you can see on that outside piece, you can see the score line right there on the edge. Do the same thing here, just to the inside, like so. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, now, these sections are actually an inch and three quarters. The reason I did that was so that when we come in and punch this with the fancy tag topper punch, there'll be a really nice proportion with the tag topper section, but that's just a little bit too large for these two outside tabs. So to remedy that, I'm just gonna bring in the paper trimmer and you can totally eyeball this as well. I'm gonna fold that middle section out of the way and I'm lining up this right edge at the quarter inch mark. And we're just gonna cut off a quarter inch from those tabs. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Again, fold the piece that we don't wanna cut out of the way. And just trim those off. All right, so you can see that those are just slightly shorter. Now these are actually gonna end up being tabs that fold into the box. So I'm gonna come in and notch or miter those, all four of those. And in the process of doing that, you'll see that we're actually removing that score line when we do that little miter. All right, now the ends on the portrait side are done. So let me turn it back this way. Now we are gonna focus with it in landscape mode and two score lines in from both the left and the right, we're gonna come in and cut up that vertical score line, stopping at the horizontal score line. And again, I'm cutting just inside of the score line. Like so, see the score line edges are there on the outside pieces. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Like so. Now we have kind of this weird cutting pattern going on here. But we are now actually going to come in. So these are all one and a half inch square pieces. This piece that's next to kind of this loose tab, we are going to cut on the diagonal. So we're going to basically remove half of that square but on the diagonal. 
and I'm cutting from the score line on the diagonal to the opposite corner. If it's easier for you, go ahead and fold away that tab here, and then I'm gonna come in and cut on the diagonal. Now I'm right-handed, so it's easier if the paper I'm removing is off to the right of the scissors. So I'm just gonna rotate my paper to do that all the way around. So there is one side. I'm gonna repeat the same thing over here, again, folding that middle tab just out of the way, cutting on the diagonal. I'll flip the paper so that I'm always kind of cutting in the same direction. There we go, it's starting to look like we just have one minor adjustment to make. Now because this box is gonna to go together like this, I think you can tell this center piece here is just a hair too long. See how that's not lining up nicely there? So I'm just gonna come in and cut about a 16th of an inch of a sliver, totally eyeballing it. No one's gonna see it, so don't even worry about cutting it straight. But again, from both of those pieces, I'm just gonna cut off a little sliver. And I mean, it's just a tiny one, 16th of an inch or so. Next, we're gonna come in with the tag topper punch so that we can punch these two ends to give it that really cool topper there. So I'm using the fancy tag topper punch and I am just going to fold these tabs out of the way. This is the section that has that little one inch score line that we wanna punch. I'm just gonna gently feed that into the punch now I'm gonna flip it upside down. I always like to look from the back to make sure that that is pushed all the way up to the edge and we're centered on either side of that tag topper. Like so. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing here, again, folding those tabs out of the way, starting to feed it into the punch. Flip it over, look at the back, and punch. Look at how cool that tag topper punch is. Now we've got three different tag topper punches. All of them will work for this project. The next thing I'm gonna do is just fold backwards on that score line and come in and burnish. And now before we put this together, let's go ahead and glue down our designer series paper. We're using the Whale of a Time designer series paper. I love this pattern with the little seahorses. I've got two pieces that measure one and three eighths by one and seven eighths, and you want those to be in landscape if you have a directional pattern. And then I have two pieces that measure five eighths by one and seven eighths, again, in landscape if you have a directional pattern. Now these pieces are gonna glue down like so. You wanna think about how your box is going together. They're gonna glue down like so, and you wanna make sure that your pattern is going this way and this way because of the way that the box goes together. And I'm also picking the better of the patterns to pair together because one will be the front and one will be the back. So I'm just gonna come in with liquid glue and glue these pieces down. All right, there we go. Now it is ready to glue together. Now I'm just gonna show you, we're gonna dry fit it here so that you can see how it goes together. These middle sections will fold up. This will come over, up, and around. Same thing with the opposite side, over, up, and around. And that's how we get that really cool crisscross pattern on the side. Same thing on the other side, over, up, and around, like so, okay? Now, it's up to you. I prefer to use liquid glue for this. Again, I'm gonna figure out which side I want to be the front. I think I want this one to be the front. So that'll be the last side we put together. So starting with the back, I'm gonna apply liquid glue on the back side of those two tabs. We'll do both with glue at the same time. All right, so now over, and the liquid glue gives you a little bit of time to get things into place. Again, fold up that center, up and over. Okay, and we'll repeat the same thing on the opposite side, then we'll come in and burnish the adhesive down. And because we took those extra measures to trim away with the mitering and trimming off a little sliver, everything lines up really nicely on the edges there and it gives the box a really nice finish. 
All right, so now I can come in with my bone folder and just burnish that down, make sure the adhesive is good and glued. And there is that box, it's coming together. This will pinch together, okay? So let me show you my trick for holding that together with ribbon. This ribbon comes from the Flowers for Every Season Ribbon Combo Pack. You actually get three rolls of ribbon in the combo pack for a total of 20 yards of ribbon. I'm gonna use this really cute Just Jade gingham ribbon pattern. And I'm just gonna cut off a six inch length of ribbon. I'm gonna do sort of a modified Vera Bradley ribbon pull. And I'm gonna hold my ribbon like this and then I'm gonna twist it around like so. Okay, so I'm holding it like this, twisting the ends down. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more time. Now if I flip this ribbon over, it's gonna look familiar to you like a support ribbon. Okay, so we're actually doing it the opposite way. So got those tails overlapped. Then I'm gonna feed it through the back of my treat box here on the tag topper, both ends. And then I'm gonna take the ends up and back through the loop and then pull that tight, okay? Looks like that. Then I'm gonna come in with my paper snips and just cut the ribbon at an angle. Like so, and then I'll just pull apart the ribbon, spread it slightly, and that part is done. I love how it holds that together. Okay, now let's do a little bit of stamping. We're gonna be using the Whale Done Bundle. It comes with this really cute stamp set. I love the sentiment, thanks a ton. So we're gonna use that one paired with the heart and the awesome Whale Builder Punch. I love this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is punch out a whale from Whisper White. And then I'm gonna use the great color combination of Just Jade and Pretty Peacock. All right, so we're gonna stamp the thanks a ton sentiment in Pretty Peacock. I've got my whale kind of turned up to the left here. And then I'm gonna stamp the heart in Just Jade. And I love how those pair together, those two colors. Grabbing a rhinestone with my Take Your Pick tool and I'm just gonna place that right in the center of the heart. Like so, a little bit of bling there. Grabbing a pair of dimensionals. And then we'll pop that on the front of our treat box. And there we have our crisscross treat box. How cute is that? So many fun things you can fit in here. So many different ways to change it up with different colors and papers and sentiments can't wait to see what you make. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle and it's a great way to get your wish list for less. I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies, and you can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of our catalog, you can order catalogs through me at thepaperpixie.com catalogs. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made and what you fit inside the box, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.